They're going to be the biggest thistles I've ever seen in my life. Morning guys, so today we are in Upbrook in Derbyshire and we're on a shorter walk than usual, just six and a half miles. We're going to walk through the village of Upbrook, which is up from a Moravian settlement. Then walking through the village, we'll head up to the Mitchell's Way, then through Loco Park and passing Loco Hall and the lake and then hatching the edge of Spondon and then back into Upbrook. Well, it's August, but you wouldn't know it. It's wet and, well, basically, I'm having to wear my winter waterproofs for the summer. Uh, it's going to be wet all day, I believe. I drizzle and heavier rain later. So let's see how we get on with that. So behind me is the Lich Gate. It was built in 1923. It's the main entranceway to the Church of Artbrook, which is the, the Church of All Saints. Tower is the oldest part of the church dating from the 12th century, with four foot thick walls. The Stanhope family of Elveston became patrons of the church in the 1600s. And then in the 18th century, the Pars of Hopewell Hall took over as patrons of the church. Over the years, the church has had several extensions and renovations by the Stanhope and Pars families. This is the Queen's Head. The pub has the same name since 1837, as it was in 1837 when Queen Victoria came to the throne. During the Second World War, the pub was used by the Home Guard as their headquarters. This house looks a little bit out of place for the rest of the village. The village is 1700s, and then we've got a, it's like an American beach house. This three-story ex-public house that is now called Greenside, it is known that many visitors to the Mulvanian settlement stayed here. Even on one occasion, the Bishop of Litchfield an extension to Greenside in 1865 and 1880 made it the Sunday school and a plaque on the wall shows that it was used as an auxiliary hospital for injured servicemen during the Great War between 1914 and 19... The Moravian settlement comes from a Bohemian Christian reformer by the name of John Huss, who was burned at the stake in 1415 and then his followers founded their church in Moravia. The Moravian Church is one of the oldest Protestant denominations in the world, dating back to the Bohemian Reformation from 1457 in the Kingdom of Bohemia, which is part of the Czech Republic. An Anglican curate, Jacob Rogers, was influenced by the Moravians and preached in Nottingham from 1740. He was asked to come to Otbrook by Isaac Friesen, a local farmer, and this led to a society being formed in the village. The society was a forerunner of the congregation that was settled by the bishop, Peter Bohila, some 10 years later, with the church being built on the hill to the north of the original village in 1752. The building on the left originates as a boys' boarding school from 1822. On the right is the headmaster's house, which was added in 1907 and then closed in 1915. The boys and their masters transferred to another Mulvanian school in Yorkshire. The following day, the school was reopened as a girls' school. Since 1915, the school has expanded with several extensions. The old headmaster's house is now the school's administration block. This is the manse a house provided for a minister. Middle class and wealthy people were attracted to the village and built many big houses where cottage industries developed with bootmakers, shoemakers and tailors. One such person was Mrs Elizabeth Bates who financed many of the buildings from 1810 leaving the manse above in a will to the congregation for the use of the minister. The manse and other buildings in the village are now grade 2 listed. The chapel clock in front was made by Whitehurst and Son of Derby. It bears the date of 1827. Construction of the chapel started in 1751 and the roof was raised in just two months. The chapel was opened in 1752. This is Bishop's Walk, which is the right hand side of the chapel. The plaque on the wall points the way to the burial ground at the rear of the building and commemorates its consecration on April 6, 1752 by Bishop Peter Bowler.
This is the single sister's house. The sisters moved from a small cottage outside the settlement where the earliest day school for girls had been established in 1751 to here in April 1760. Ten years later, an extension was built to include new workshops and today this extension has been converted into three flats. The sisters taught young girls to spin, knit and embroidery, as well as farming at a nearby plot of land. School today continues with a Christian ethos. In 2012, the school was opened up to boys from 11 plus, making this private school of 450 open to boys and girls. So guys, we are heading out of Otbrook now, and we're gonna head up towards the Mitchell's Way. Now, if you haven't subscribed, then please do. I've actually hit 200 subscribers now, and hopefully we can uh, develop a lot further. So if you like hiking, backpacking, long distance walking, or want to download some trails for yourself, as well as learn some skills and tips on the great outdoors, then please consider subscribing. So next stop is a Bartlewood Lodge, as we head out of the village, or the settlement. These are definitely fancy gates for a caravan. So he spends all his money on the gates, not much on his own. This is Bartlewood Lodge, built in 1744 and acquired by the Pars family of Hopwell Hall from 1806. Now the lodge is a pub with a stone house pizza and carvery. The area we're walking past now is the Dale Hill Natural Burial Ground. This is a way of caring for the dead with minimal impact on the environment, working to redevelop our countryside and by paying tribute to those who have died by planting trees, shrubs and wildflowers. Dale Hill has been part of the Loco estate for over 250 years. We're on the Midshires Way now. It's a 362 kilometre route from Bleedlow in Buckinghamshire, Stockport, part of Greater Manchester, and passes through six counties along its route.
public footpath to Stanley. Well, we don't need to go there because I'm right here. Because I'm Andy Stanley, the expedition hiker. Well, as you've probably guessed by now, it's quite a windy day today. I did believe it was meant to be raining all day, but instead we've got wind gusts of probably some storm that's passing through. So I'm guessing this is either one of three things. It's either a nice house, a place to, where they uh, left their meats, cool meats, or is the third thing is it could be an air raid shelter. Uh, you can see from the back section it's made of concrete, although it is cracked a lot now. So you know the usual, answers on the postcard or leave a message in the comments. What do you think this is for? Locko Hall Estate was mentioned in the Doomsday Book of 1086, when the land is recorded as belonging to a Saxon. Locko Hall was mentioned in the Doomsday Book of 1086, when the land is recorded as belonging to a Saxon called Story. Following the Norman Conquest, the Manor of Spondon was one of the 210 manors awarded to Baron Henry de Ferriers, a Norman companion of William the Conqueror for his bravery and support during the Battle of Raystrands. Henry seems to have owned most of the area of walked in the past several months in Nottinghamshire and Derbyshire. Locker Hall, in 1180, the De Ferriers gave the land to the Burton Lazars of Leicestershire, an order of St. Lazarus monks, dedicated to the care and nursing of lepers. The monks founded a leper hospital on the Locker estate to the rear of the existing Locker Hall building. The word loco is derived partly from the old French locus, meaning rags. The manor was fortified in the region of Henry III, 1216 to 1272, because the ferriers supported a rebellion against him, and it was then granted to Edmund Earl of Lancaster. Much of the local area, including the Locker estate and hospital, were destroyed by the Great Spondon Fire of 1340. Locker Hall and Park Estate is 300 acres in size and began to take shape in the early 18th century. The main hall was built in 1720 by Francis Smith of Warwick. The landscaping of the park and lake were the work of William Ems and John Webb in the late 1700s, the commission having previously been turned down by Capability Brown. Capability Brown was an English landscape architect. He is remembered as the as the last of the great English 18th century artist and known as the England's greatest gardener. John Gilbert Cooper sold the estate to John Lowe in 1747. The last of the manors willed the manor to a relation, William Drury in 1790, who assumed the name Drury Lowe. The property is still owned by descendants of the Drury Lowe family and today is mainly a private property, although parts of the hall and gardens are used as a wedding venue and occasionally open to the public by fairs and events on the estate.
As we walk down the drive and to the lodge house of Locker Hall, we're now heading to Sponden. So we're just arriving in Sponden. So the name Sponden is derived from the Anglo-Saxon words spon, meaning gravel, and wood or wood chip or shingle, and dune, meaning hill, giving us Spondoon. As a gravelly hill eventually took the name of Sponden in the 18th century. The area of land in the 11th century was given to, guess who? Yep, Henry de Ferriers, of course, who else? In 1340, a huge fire, now known as the Great Fire of Spondon, began in a malt house on the site of the Malt Shovel Inn. Aided by a strong wind, the fire raged wildly through the village, destroying all but a small part of the settlement. Such was the devastation and cost of the damage, villagers appealed to the king for help, who granted the villagers exemption from parish taxes for nine months. This funded the start of the rebuilding of the village and Sponden was slowly rebuilt over the following 50 years. Okay, ladies and gents, we are back in Otbrook and we've finished this six mile circular route. As you can see, it's been a bit windy as my hair is all blown up. Uh, but hopefully you've enjoyed it like usual and uh, a like would be great. Also, if you would like to uh, subscribe and you haven't done, then that would be great too. And like to uh, build on my 200 subscribers and now we're going to aim for 500. I think I might do a giveaway, although I'm not sure what I'm going to give away. Some of my garbage, you can have that, or maybe something a little bit better. Anyway, we're going to get to 500 before then, and the squirrel will just run across my back, behind me. So, with that saying, I'll see you on the next one. And uh, we've got quite a few long distance walks coming up. So, until then, stay safe, look after yourselves, and... Bye bye hikers! <laughs>